Today, is HEM dead? Hello again, I'm Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics. Welcome to our latest post covering finance and property news with a distinctively Australian flavour. Today, we do a deep dive into unsuitable lending following the Royal Commission's interim report, which was released last week. Specifically, we ask, is the household expenditure measure dead? And by the way, if you value the content we produce, please do consider joining our Patreon program, where you can support our ability to make great content. Here's the link, and it's in the comments below. The household expenditure measure is a tool that the mortgage industry has been using for years to assess households' ability to service a mortgage, and often it has become the key lending decision tool. It's based on a series of data points on typical household spending patterns, but often it understates the real situation in our experience, meaning that households may get loans that are difficult to service. This is an issue that arose during the first round of the Royal Commission hearings and has recently been a source of debate in the mortgage industry. The interim report from the Royal Commission into misconduct in the banking, superannuation and financial services industry was published last week and we discussed the key points in an earlier post. But as well as scrutinising broker commissions and bank incentives, Commissioner Kenneth Hayne looked at how lenders and brokers utilise the household expenditure measure when fulfilling their responsible lending obligations. Commissioner Hain highlighted that the National Consumer Credit Protection Act of 2009, the NCCP Act, requires a credit licensee to assess whether the credit contract would be unsuitable for the consumer if the loan contract is made or, in the case of a credit limit increase, the limit is increased. He highlighted that steps to ascertain whether the loan is unsuitable included making reasonable inquiries about the consumer's requirements and objective in relation to the credit contract, knowing the consumer's financial situation, and taking reasonable steps to verify the consumer's financial situation. However, Commissioner Hayne argued that the case studies from the first rounds of hearings suggested that credit licensees too often have focused and too often continue to focus only on serviceability rather than making the inquiries and verification required by law. The report said, more particularly, identifying that the consumer's income is larger than a general statistical benchmark for expenditure by consumers whose domestic circumstances are generally similar to those of the person seeking the loan, does not reveal the particular consumer's financial situation. All it does is convey information to the credit licensee that it may judge sufficient for it to decide that the risk of the consumer failing to service the loan is acceptable. Verification calls for more than taking the consumer at his or her word. Commissioner Hain asked in the interim report, if the consumer claims to have regular income, what step has the credit licensee taken to verify the claim? Lenders, more often than not, failed to verify outgoings. Noting that verification is often not difficult and can be made via bank statements, Commissioner Hain added that although the evidence showed that more often than not, each of ANZ, CBA, NAB and Westpac took some steps to verify the income of an applicant for a home loan, it also showed that, much more often than not, none of them took any steps to verify the applicant's outgoings. His interim report was critical of the industry's reliance on HEM, with the report outlining the general tenor of the evidence was that a lender satisfied responsible lending obligations to verify a borrower's financial position if the lender assessed the suitability of the loan by reference to the hire of a borrower's declared household expenses and the household expenditure measure H. 
PEM, published by the Melbourne Institute, or some equivalent measure, and that verifying outgoings was, quote, too hard. But what was meant by verifying outgoings being too hard was that the benefit to the bank of doing this work was not worth the bank's cost of doing it. Commissioner Hayne highlighted the ANZ case study in which a borrower supplied ANZ a copy of his bank statement from another lender as verification of his income, but that the outgoings recorded on that statement were obviously inconsistent with what the borrower recorded as his outgoings. He said ANZ's procedures did not require consideration of, and in fact the relevant bank employers did not look at the bank's statements for any purpose other than verifying income. The Commissioner added that the ANZ did not think that there was a material uplift in reviewing customer bank statements for general account conduct to identify whether there were any obvious inconsistencies between a customer's stated expenses and transaction history or any general indicators of financial stress. He pointedly remarked that the bank did not make reference to whether or not the responsible lending requirements suggested or required otherwise. Further, the interim report outlined that although Westpac, which recently paid a $35 million penalty for failing to verify expenses, has expanded its expenses categories this year. In most cases, Westpac does not require customers to provide regular transaction statements for non-Westpac accounts, and the verification, as distinct from the inquiry of the customer's expenses, remains largely with the customer. As well as the lack of income verification being undertaken, the interim report suggested that relying on the HEM benchmark was not always appropriate, as it was only a modest expenditure calculation and takes no account of whether a particular borrower has unusual household expenditures, as may well be the case. For example, if a member of the household has special needs or an aged patient lives with or is otherwise cared for by the family. Commissioner Haynes' report concluded it follows that using HEM as the default measure of household expenditure does not constitute any verification of a borrower's expenditure. On the contrary, much more often than not, it will mask the fact that no sufficient inquiry has been made about the borrower's financial position. And that will be the case much more often than not because three out of four households spend more on discretionary basics than is allowed in the HEM. And there will be some households that spend some amount on non-basics. He added, using HEM as the default measure of household expenditure assumes, often wrongly, that a household does not spend more on discretionary basics than allowed in HEM, and does not spend anything on non-basics. As such, Commissioner Hain asked, should the HEM continue to be used as a benchmark for borrowers' living expenses? Well, my view is that HEM is indeed dead, and that lenders will need a set of calibrated processes to ensure a given loan is suitable for a borrower, depending on the specific circumstances, including the purpose of the loan, the experience of the customers, and the significance of the transaction. And they cannot simply outsource that to the customer. They have to make independent verification and validation. As a result, the loan application and verification process will get tougher still, and more applications will fail to pass muster. Another reason why credit growth will continue to sag, and this is a permanent change in the weather, not a short, sharp shower. And by the way, if you value the content we produce, please do consider joining our Patreon program, where you can support our ability to continue to make great content. The link is in the comments below. As always, if you like what you've seen here today, please share and like the post and add a comment or question. I read them all. And if you want to join the growing band of subscribers who receive alerts when we release new posts, do subscribe now by hitting the subscribe bell. And if you've already subscribed, many thanks. I really appreciate your support and participation. I'm Martin North, the Principal Analyst at Digital Finance Analytics. Many thanks for watching, and I'll see you 
next time.